We open up on Friday night, double hitter with the men. We play Texas State, and I believe they play South Carolina Upstate or some team in that. I think it's just a great time to open up a season with a double hitter with both teams playing, and then you got a soccer game right across the street at 7 o'clock. Uh, I think it's going to be a good weekend for sports. Uh, hopefully we can take care of business on the football field Saturday. But the most important thing for both uh, Coach Kennedy and myself is opening up, letting our fans see the new looks that we're bringing in and see a lot of his new players that he has. And uh, I think it's going to be a good year for basketball. I think it's going to be also a good year for basketball fans to turn their attention to basketball and be with us at the start, not be with us in January or February or March when we make playoffs and everything, but uh, to start off with us and to build with us and see the growth of the team and see the new kids on both the men and the women's team. Uh, I think they're going to be very good. I know Billy had a top five recruiting class and our two recruits and our transfer and uh, our junior college kid who set out last year. So we've got four new kids that we're moving into the mix. Now, we've played an exhibition game. We just came back from uh, playing a scrimmage up in the Dallas area against UCLA. It's the best thing we've ever done is schedule another Division One team to for a scrimmage situation, but it really worked well for us because they were long, athletic, and very talented, and hopefully we got a lot out of it because we saw real, right quick Courtney Walker with 28 and Courtney Williams with uh, 25 in the ball game. That was 53 out of our uh, 83 points in the ball game, but it worked out well, but the competition and the size helped us so much more than playing a junior college team like we've done the, the last three years in a scrimmage situation. I'll open it up for questions. Prior to this year, Gary, how much motion have you done in this system at A&M, and how much percentage-wise do you expect to do it this year with this group? The only motion I did was usually when I danced, yeah. and that was about the only motion, and it wasn't good motion, but it was what I had at the time, and I could show it. And by the way, I watched Dancing with Stars last night. It was very good. But that was about it on motion. I was a set play coach. But times are changing. Kids want to play motion. And I'm adjusting, and we're doing pretty well with it right now. But it takes recognition. It takes kids, five people working together, not just the person with the ball, but the screens, reading the screens, slipping the screens, and having a better knowledge of the game itself. And that's what you have to do. When you see a Connecticut run their motion offense, you say, gosh, I want to do that. Well, the thing is, they're doing it with about nine All-Americans out of ten players. They always carry a walk-on. But they're doing it with nine All-Americans, and it sure it looks pretty. The same way the San Antonio Spurs did – when they won their championship a couple years ago. Their motion was very, very good. Any other questions? You're always, when you say a real perimeter team, I think first you've got to back up and say, I've got three of the best guards in the SEC, and then with Chelsea Jennings either starting or coming off the bench, and my freshman Danny Williams, that's five right there. They're pretty doggone good players in any league whatsoever. That's our strength of our team. But you cannot just – you can win 20 games by having great guard play. But I do not believe you can win championships unless you have post-game and have an awareness where people are not going to just sit back and play you zones or try to take away Williams and Walker or play you triangle and two defenses. What you've got to do is you've got to incorporate motion where you can run it against a man or a zone. We have to develop the four position 
And right now we've got two new kids in there, Jazz Lumpkin, the transfer from Michigan State. And uh, she's with us from day one, being able to play, uh, very similar to the Daniel House situation last year. She transferred, set out a half year. We won the appeal. She's ready to go. And Andrea Howard, the 5'11 kid, uh, that someday will be doing what you guys are doing for a living, hopefully making a little bit more money in y'all. But she's going to go into communications, and she's working for 12th Man Video already. And she's the best rebounder we have on the team. And then also she'll run track for Pat Henry. She's 41-2 triple jumper, and she'll be doing both sports. Now, I say I've got those two fours. I've got my two fives. I got six five, six seven. It's a work in progress, and that's where we are right now. Kyla has really improved a lot over the summer, but she's got to put it down on the court against the big time teams, like when we played UCLA or when we have uh, Duke in our third ball game here. We've got to see how much she has advanced, and then at the same time, all you guys want to know. What about that 6'7 girl over there? Well, she's still 6'7. She's still in her fifth year. She's 22 years old. And hopefully that light switch is going to come on and she's going to play well for us this year because she can do it during practice and do it in spots during a ball game. But we have to have consistency out of her, particularly in the SEC. With as small as we are at the four position, that means our five players have got to be our enforcers to be able to be effective in this league. Any other questions for Coach? If you can wait for the microphone. Sam. Oh. OK, go ahead, Gabe. Yeah, Coach, can you talk about oh, I thought you had to wait for the microphone. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, I'm going to answer the point guard thing. What the hell is going on? Uh, just, just hang in there. <laughs> point guard situation, Jordan is 90% back, okay? She had a chance to play against one of the best point guards in the Pac-12 this weekend, Jordan Canada, who played USA Basketball. So we could see what she could do against speed, whatever. She still had 11 assists in the ball game. She still knows how to distribute. She cannot do defensively what she was doing at the end of the year before she got hurt last year and what she's done for three years. But there's a lot of ways that you can still help your team mentally. You can help your team by distributing the ball. You can be more of a game manager instead of a game breaker at the point guard position. Now I know she's used to doing her daring drives through the middle and all of that. Her three-point shooting is improved and all the little things that you have to have as a point guard. But when you're a senior, you're expected to do that. At her 90% right now, is still better than I would say uh, 10 out of the 14 point guards in the SEC. So I just can't wait for her to get to 100%, but that might come in January, February. Now, how are we going to monitor her playing time? We're not going to sit there and play her 40 minutes a game during this early time. You're going to see Courtney Walker play the point guard some as well. And she played some. We'll have different sets for everything. It would sort of be like in football when you run the Wildcat or something like that. Uh, well, hell, I know we run the spread all the time. But you'll have different packages for certain kids, particularly in a zone offense. Where can we get Walker her most shots? Sometimes let's let her run the offense and then let them adjust, get the ball back to her. But uh, Shalante is struggling at the point guard position. She's not struggling scoring. She's struggling running my team. And that's, that's what we demand out of our point guards. Leadership, accountability, responsibility, not just can you score. She's struggling a little. But remember, she was recruited as a two guard. We're making her into a point guard. Curtis is just not ready right now. And when he had a baby six months ago, hell, Gabe, 
when you, you're a daddy, what, about four weeks ago or something like that, you're probably not ready to be a star on the radio show right now. you got to work your way back into it. So that's the same thing that Curtis is having to do is after motherhood, get back in shape for she can help us at the point guard position. Daryl? Gabe's always a superstar on the radio, Coach. Sorry, Gabe. Hey, can you talk about what you'll face against Texas State? I, I know it's about you and what you want to see from your team, but what exactly, I guess, maybe uh, challenges will Texas State present you that will allow you to see the best of your team in the opener? The most important thing, I want to worry about our team. We'll do the scouting report and everything like that. I want to see our team execute against a number on a jersey that we're going to be guarding. Give respect to Texas State because when I was in the Southland Conference, that was one of the better teams. It was Southwest Texas State back then. And it was just a great series that we had back then. Uh, I, I think when Texas State, uh, they've been in the middle of the pack in the Southland Conference. They do a lot of nice things. Their uh, point guard's good. They've got solid post players. They're not going to have the depth that we're going to have, and they're not going to have perhaps the speed that we have outside. So what we want to do is use these two games this weekend to help us get ready to identify our strengths and our weaknesses. What are we going to need? Because when we know when we go to Duke in our third ball game, we're going to see 40 minutes of zone, big zone, big crowd. And so hopefully what UCLA did for us will get us ready. But Texas State, we want to first let our fans know there's nothing wrong with this basketball team. We've sort of had to carry a chip on our shoulder all year thinking, well, boy, we had a down year last year and everything. So we only went 23-10, and 10, won six out of seven ball games at the end until – we had the injury against Missouri, and we lost four out of five. No excuses. We should have been able to overcome that. So as a coach, I've walked around trying to explain there's nothing wrong with our team when I've got the best guards in the SEC coming back, and we're still a developing at the four and the five position. So there's nothing wrong. They need to buy their season tickets. Not wait to January, not think that uh, Chicken Little's falling out of the sky. Everything's good with Aggie basketball.